So, hello, uh, can everyone hear me all right? Yeah, cool. So this talk uh, is to talk about FS2, uh, which is a purely functional streaming I.O. library. But beyond that detail, what this talk is really about uh, is about declarative control flow. And our stream can hopefully uh, help you achieve, achieve that. So who am I? Uh, my name is Fabio. Uh, I am a senior software engineer in the financial industry and an open source author in the PureFP Scala ecosystem one of the maintainers of FS2, and I'll maintain or contribute to HTTP4S, CATS, CATS Effect, Shapeless, and, and all those. So let's get straight into it by talking very briefly about CATS Effect. So CATS Effect um, is a library that exposes uh, several things, among which this type called IO. So uh, IO of A is a data type uh, that represents a computation that, when run, will either produce one value or fail or never terminate. And um, this like kind of looks like future a little bit on you know on the outside, but there's a crucial difference. So IO is referentially transparent; it's, it's pure. There's no side effects. IO suspends side effects. Uh, and I'm happy that Ross talked about this for a bit because I don't have time. So you have to take my word for it that this is compositional because of the lack of side effects. So IO is cool. Um, and uh, you use I.O. by exploiting its many algebras. So it's, it's a monad, you know, the I.O. monad. But, you know, it's functor, applicative, and what have you. Uh, and then, you know, you compose your program by composing all these I.O.s. And then at the very end of the world, you run it with unsafe fronting. And then all the stuff actually, actually happens. So let's look at uh, an example of, of data processing uh, using, using I.O. So I have this very simple uh, algorithm uh, that takes, you know, data pipeline or whatever you want to call it, that takes a list of string and returns another list of string. And what it's doing is simply filtering out all the empty uh, strings or the ones that are comments, and then transforming all of them to uppercase and then take the first hundred. And this is nice. And the reason this is nice is because it's compositional, right? So each, each part makes sense on its own. Uh, but now let's say I want to read this list from a file. And if I were to do this with side effects, I will lose that compositionality for the code that actually calls in, into, my, into my thing. So what I want to do instead is wrap it into I.O. Uh, and it's very simple. I just imagine that read this from file is a Java or you know, side effect or Scala function, and you wrap it into I.O. And then you map, uh, which basically gives you access to the, 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 the list, uh, and then we process. Uh, and this is fine. This, this works. This works fine. Um, now, the problem, though, is that this is assuming that you, so this is loading the whole list into memory when run, right? Uh, so it assumes that your list actually fits into memory. And, and if your list does not fit into memory, then you cannot do this. And so if you want to do this with I.O., now you have to write a recursive function on the I.O. monad that reads one chunk and transforms it. Uh, and, and that's also fine, but then you've lost this nice filter map, you know, this nice high-level high level declarative way of expressing what you want. So yeah, uh, put this onto your stack for a second, and let's look uh, at stream. Um, so FS2 uh, exposes this type uh, stream. And you can see it's got two type parameters, uh, F and A. So the A there, it's, uh, it's basically the value that the stream is going to emit. So a stream is a data type that represents a computation that is going to emit 0 or 1 or n values, where n can be infinite. And there's no problem. Like Having infinite streams is actually a perfectly, perfectly fine thing to do. And that's actually very useful. And hopefully, I'll show you why uh, it's useful. And, and during the emission of, of these values, a stream will request effects in F. So this can be a bit of like, uh, you know, uh, cryptic, but all I mean is basically the F there is, is generally I.O. So it's describing the action of emitting, of emitting things when emission requires some effect, like reading things from a file or printing them to a file or reading from a queue or, you know, mutating some state or whatever. And it's still completely pure. It's just another description of, of, of things. Um, and yeah, here I say F is normally I.O. Uh, it's a bit of a lie. I actually like to keep the F abstract in most of my code. Uh, but for simplicity in the slides, I'm only going to have I.O. And there's also cases where you want something that is not as powerful as I.O. So do be connection I.O. Is, is an example uh, of that. Uh, so example of data processing with streams. Uh, you don't need, I don't think you need to know the library well to kind of understand what, what's going on. But basically, I've got this, this is from the README. Uh, I've got this Fahrenheit to Celsius uh, conversion. And I'm doing read all on a file. Uh, and then basically, I'm passing that through something that will decode to UTF and split into lines, remove empty lines and comments, and then transform each line 
add a new line, re-encode the bytes, and then write to a file. Now this looks like I'm actually reading the whole file, right? Read all. But read all returns a stream, so what's actually happening is that it's gonna emit the chunk of the file at the time, and it's completely transparent from, like, from, from the user. So what you see, you see the same kind of high level code that you add with like IO and list, but now it's streaming. And that, that's what we mean by streaming IO. The ability to operate in constant memory. So, um, so FS2 is, is cool. For, so when you have like this situation of like things that don't fit into memory, you might reach for streaming very naturally. But conversely, if you do not have this situation, then you might think that FS2 is not, is not, is not for you. It doesn't give you anything. So what this talk is, 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 is about is actually not the streaming part. Uh, but it's about using streams for control flow instead. So it's kind of like you get the streaming thing on top as an additional advantage, but that's not the only use case. And in fact, most of my use cases are for control flow. And I guess streaming like as an additional thing that I also end up using, uh, but it's not the main, the main point. Uh, so in order to, to do that, let's have a, a bit of a closer look at how you build uh, streams and how you manipulate them. So I picked a, a few, a few uh, sort of combinators, uh, and the, the important ones are like the first two. The, the other is just, just an example. So you got stream.emit, and emit will produce a stream that describes emission of, of the arguments to that. So it's basically describing a stream that will emit one, and then two, and then three. And then the other one, uh, this important one, it's eval. Uh, so eval uh, describes the action of embedding an I.O. into the stream. So what that does is it will produce a stream that when, when run, will evaluate the I.O. So, uh, and then emit whatever the I.O. produces. So in this case, it will just print a low and emit unit. Uh, and then I've got this other thing. So the, the emit and eval are primitives. Uh, and repeat eval is not a primitive, obviously. It's just a composite operation. Uh, and I, I put it there to show you an example of an infinite stream. So repeat eval is just like eval, except it's going to repeat itself forever. So it's just got, if you run it, it will just print a low. Uh, forever. And again, we'll see why you might want to do this. Um, so you create streams with these combinators and with, 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 other, with other functions, and then you compose them together with, with, with things that we will see in the next slide. And then at some point you want to say, well, I've got this stream which is all nice in a description, but how do I actually make things happen? So the way you do it is actually by compiling the stream down to a single I.O. So we have, uh, sorry, we have uh, compile.drain, and what this thing does, it takes a stream of I.O. A, and will return an I.O. of unit. And that I.O. unit is an action that describe, describes running, running the whole stream for, for its effects. So I'm assuming that I've, all, that I've already accounted for the emission of the values, either by using them in another stream, or by you know, putting them into, into a file, or, or whatever. Um, and now you've got an I.O. You can keep composing your I.O. as you would do with, with any other I.O. Uh, and then at the, very, uh, at the very end of your program, uh, in, in Maine, the end of the world, uh, you uh, unsafe run sync, and actually now things happen. But because it's the last instruction, there's nothing to observe that side effect, so all of your code ends up being pure. Um, so yeah, this is the basics of like creating streams and, and running streams. Now, how do we operate on those things? What things can we do with them? And the intuition I want to give here is to think of stream as a sort of list with superpowers. And the superpowers are sort of lazy emission, so it doesn't have to be, you know, or emit the whole list at once. You can emit one value at a time, and evaluating effects. You cannot evaluate effects on a list unless you're actually doing side effects, which are bad because of compositionality and all, and all that. So the first example is uh, append, right? So I've got all this very simple code with a list. I'm creating, you know, 100 numbers, and then I'm taking the first three, and then I'm appending 21, 22. So if we were to write the same thing with, 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 with stream, what, what are the semantics of this? So I have that put there, which is basically just a purely functional print line, so print line wrapped in I.O. And I'm saying, well, create a stream that repeat eval uh, put hello. That means that it will you know, evaluate this, this I.O. action and then, and then emit a uh, unit, because put, uh, put will return I.O. of unit. So this is an infinite stream, right? But then if I take three, just as with a list, you know, I'm just taking the first three. With a stream, it means I'm evaluating just the first three times. And then appending, it means, you know, running one stream, and when this stream is finished emitting, I'm gonna run the other stream. So it's a very simple, you know, do this and then do that uh, operator. 
So what happens is that you do hello, when you run this compile, you know, unsafe, blah, 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 you do hello, hello, hello world. And so this is the first way in which a stream looks a bit like, like a list with superpowers. So another example is flood map. Uh, so what does flood map do on a list? It, you know, uh, there's a function that operates on each element of the list and will produce another list. And once you've done this, you've got this list of lists and then you concatenate all the end lists. And the stream is exactly the same, right? So I've got this stream one to three and flood map takes a function that will operate on each emitted element. It will produce another stream. Uh, and then we'll concatenate them with plus plus. So we, it means it will, you know, run the first, uh, emit the first element, produce another stream, and run this first stream, and then emit the second element and run the second stream, and so on. Just like you know the you know append that we've seen before. So in this case, kind of the same thing. I am printing twice. Uh, so what you get, you get one one two two uh, three three. And then the third example, which I think is a bit more uh, interesting. So uh, append and flood map are like, you use them all the time. These are the main two, the main two uh, ways. Uh, obviously there's a million other operators uh, that are non-primitives, but these two are like important. So zip, uh, I've got list one to three and list ABC. And I get these tuples, one A, two B, three C. So what does, this, what does it mean to, 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 to zip streams? So streams are not collections, right? They're actually emitting stuff. So zipping means that it's gonna wait for each side to emit one thing and then emit both. And why do you want to do this? So again, my purely functional print line and then print range is doing, you know, produce numbers from one to 10 and eval map it. And eval map is a, is a, a thing very simply written in terms of a flat map, a stream eval. So again, it's not a primitive and it's just running an action on each, on each element. So this thing, the print range is gonna print one to 10 as fast as possible. One to three or five as fast as possible. Um, now I've got a separate stream, completely completely separate, seconds, uh, which is this thing called awake every. And awake every, it just emits a tick on each second because I've got one second there. So I've got a very fast stream that prints and I've got a stream that emits on each, on each second. And when I zip them together, what happens is that I'm forcing the fast stream to go as slow as a slow stream. So the effect of this is that you get one, two, three on each second. And this is very compositional because printing has no idea about the speed of printing. Uh, and, and seconds has no idea about what it's being used for and then you just put them back together. If you were to do this with, with IO, you would have a loop in the IO and inside that loop, you need to have a logic for saying, I wanna wait a certain amount of time. So in this case, we can split these things uh, perfectly. Uh, and, and very compositionally, which I think is really nice. So these are like three of the, you know, we have very few primitives actually, it's like less than 10 and a lot of combinators. Uh, and so I wanna show you a bit of a more uh, real life example of, 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 of this and why it might be useful. So typical thing that happens to me a lot, I write server side code, I'm dealing with a flaky system and they expose a health check endpoint that I need to call to see if they're up or down. So it's representing as an I.O. Boolean here, and you can imagine that I.O. being send a request, and if it's, a, you know, if it's down, it will return false, and, and if not, it will return true. And what I want to do, I want to do this cell check once every hour. So do it once, wait an hour, do it twice, and so on. But if one single L check fails, I don't want to emit down immediately. I want to first retry with linear back off a few times, and then if it keeps failing, then emit, you know, it's down now. And then in, in any case, keep going. So I've got these two nested things. I've got this retry thing, and this old retry repeats on each hour. So uh, again, let's put it into, into, into bits. Uh, I've got uh, this function called stream retry, takes an action, the initial interval, and then a function to increase the interval. So you can see like linear back off here. I'm adding one second each time. And then max retries. So max retries means if it, so if this succeeds, it will just emit the, the success. And if it fails, it will keep retrying for up to five times. And if, it, and if by that time it hasn't succeeded, then it will fail. And stream as a concept of failed stream, just like IO as a concept of, of failed IO. So th there's no exceptions being thrown anywhere here. Um, and then the second piece, I have a retry check. And I'm gonna map, similar to list, just do something uh, on each emission, and I'm just wrapping this into health check message. So message and health check message are not FS2 things. Just imagine this might be your, your business type for messages that you, you, you're dealing with. 
then handle error, I'm saying, well, if the stream has, has failed, uh, then uh, like read, emit an error message, it means that the thing is done. So I've got this other piece, and then I wanna do all this every hour. And the way I do it, I do just check, and then after check is finished, sleep for an hour. And I've got this wait, and then just repeat the whole thing forever. And repeat again is very simple. Repeat is just like this, append, repeat. So it's just literally appending me to myself all the time. And this expresses the, the concept of, of repetition. Um, and I think this is really cool, because if you think about doing it normally with while loops, you have you know, an other while loop to do all this repetition with, with the sleep uh, in there, and then the inner loop uh, then needs to um, you know, do a try catch and then keep some state, which is the number of max retry and then reset it. Whereas here we're, we're very, very compositional, we're very declarative, it's, it's high level. So declarative control flow. So there was, there was no streaming here, right? There was no big amount of data, but it was still very useful. So the, the recipe I have for this is that you will create uh, simple actions in I.O. and you will use stream to assemble them. And I, I think that this is high level, uh, just like math and filter is more high level than while and before, is declarative, uh, you know, and, 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 and it's composable because of everything is pure and you know, there's no hidden interactions. And so the way I think about this, and it's like the one thing I want you to take away from, from, from this, is that the IOs are your words and streams are your sentences. So you can build things by just manipulating things at the word level. This will be the four comprehensions on IO. But operating on a whole sentence is much more expressive, just like map and filter being more expressive than a while loop on a list. Uh, so yeah, so this is the takeaway from the talk. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about concurrency. So FS2 puts concurrency, stream concurrency sort of at the heart of, of, of what we do. Uh, and so I'm gonna start by giving you a very quick overview of what features we have. So first of all, stream concurrency. And what I mean by this is just the ability to interleave multiple streams non-deterministically. So I've got two or three streams I wanna be able to interleave them like concurrently. Uh, concurrent coordination and data structures. Obviously, as soon as you do this, you need some way of coordinating these this concurrent interactions. And we offer several data structures like queues, semaphores, uh, ref, and, and, and several others. And you want to run on thread pools. Just because you've got four streams, it doesn't mean you want to run them on four threads. Threads are not cheap on the JVM. So you want to run multiple streams on a thread pool, and you decide how many threads. And we can also run on Scala.js, so on one actual uh, thread. Um, and then it's non-blocking, same thing. You don't want to block a single a, a thread on the JVM, or in JavaScript even less. You cannot. You can like, you just put everything into a deadlock. So, what we, and 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 so we do all that work for you. So even things that are semantically blocking, like if you do get on an empty FS2 queue, the computation will stop until you get an element. It's actually not blocking the underlying thread. The underlying thread is free to do other stuff. So you can scale. You don't have to worry about you know shifting on different thread pool or anything like that. And finally, it's resource safe. So you can allocate resources, opening files, opening connections, whatever, and then no matter what you do with the, with the, with the resulting stream, you know, if you can do all sorts of flat map and concurrency, whatever you do, we make sure that the resource is closed when the stream finishes and when there's an error. So why, why concurrency? So another way you can look at stream under this viewpoint, it's like a logical trail of execution. So a trail is like a sequence of imperative instructions and a stream is like this nice sequence that you can actually operate on with all these combinators. And so obviously, by interleaving logical threads, you can express complex behavior, just like interleaving actual threads lets you allow, allows you to express uh, complex behavior. And we want this to still be declarative and composable, even when concurrency is involved. We don't want to lose that. And I argue that this is pure fee for the real world. So people always say that like FP is good for like the small algorithms, you know, the pure things. But when you start entering DBs and connections, it stops being good. And I will say that if anything, it's actually the opposite. I'm fine writing an algorithm with while if I really need that, that extra performance. But when FX and hard stuff, you know, comes, I want my, my purity because it's going to help me build complicated stuff easily. Uh, so uh, very simple example. Uh, I'm building the same application. Uh, I've got the health check, which is a stream of message. Message is my application type or whatever. Uh, and it's just a stream IO message. So they can do all sorts of things. I don't care. For me now, it's just a stream of IO and message. 
And then I got Kafka messages. Again, he's doing all sorts of things, talking to Kafka, databases, all sorts of business logic. But in the end, it's going to be messages. And then I've got their old cell seal conversion that I still, you know, I want to still do it. Uh, and now I've got these three streams that I need a way of saying, well, my application needs to run all these, right? And the way I do it is by creating, um, first by doing a stream of streams. So I've got the outer stream, and each element of the outer stream is, is the one of the streams I need. So I've got this stream of stream thing. And drain here on Cersei Converter is important because actually I want to run all of them for their effects, but in terms of the things they emit, I'm only interested in the messages. That conversion needs to happen, but I don't care about emission of, of things. And actually, it also makes it compile because you've got message, message, and unit. You cannot emit elements of like multiple types, right? So now you've got this stream of message uh, uh, that is going to run also the Cersei Converter. And then I call join unbounded. And what join uh, does is basically gives you this stream IO message. So it's flat in the stream. But instead of doing append, which would be sequential, is doing it concurrently. And I've got another stream of your message, and I can keep doing whatever I want with it. So I've just done a flood map there, uh, but you can do whatever you want. So I've expressed simply just, just stream concurrency. Uh, yes, uh, and so um, I've got like one, one last example, which is sort of guiding you through a more complicated combinator that requires concurrency and show you why this is like, it's, it's, it's important to have these concurrency features. So what I want to do, uh, I just want to write a function that takes a, a stream and returns the same stream, except it stops the, 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 the argument after a certain amount of, of time. So three seconds or whatever. So the first piece of this, and again, I want to do this composition, right? So we're going to do it in, in pieces. So the first piece of this is just call it interrupt when on the input stream. And interrupt when is actually like does what he says on the tin. It will just interrupt uh, when that signal, uh, signal becomes true. So what's a signal? Signal is one of those concurrent data structures I was telling you about. Um, and so uh, what a signal is, you can basically think of it as something that tracks changes to a given element uh, across time. So in this case, it's, it's tracking changes uh, to a Boolean. So imagine like the, the speed of a car. That's, you can think of that uh, as a signal. And in this case, I want to signal a boolean because it needs to act basically as a switch. It's going to be false, and then as soon as it you know, becomes true, then the, the, I want to interrupt my, my input stream. So this is one piece. Now, the second piece uh, also needs a signal. Uh, and all it needs to do is wait for a certain amount of time and then set the signal to true. Uh, so again, stream sleep is the same as thread sleep, except it doesn't block a thread, so it's still non-blocking. Uh, and then after that is, is like executed, I want to just uh, signal set to true and signal set return to an IO, and that's why I need to eval it. Uh, and then we'll just set the signal to true. So I've got these two separate pieces, right? They don't know a lot about each other. I've got one thing that will stop as soon as this switch gets set to true, and I've got another thing uh, that will wait for a given amount of time and then just set the signal to true. And the reason that they both take one as an argument is because I want to be able to share this thing between the two. So I'm actually sharing state here, purely functionally. It's not true that you cannot do shared state. You can do it, and it's still nice to use. Uh, and now I've got these two pieces together, uh, and I got the next thing. So I now need to create the signal, which this async signal off will do. And this will just return an IO signal IO boolean. Uh, which is an action that will you know, produce a signal initialized to false. And I do eval to you know, lift it into the stream context. And when I FUDMAP, I get access to the stop signal. And now I can pass this signal to both out and stop. So now they are sharing this concurrent structure of the signal. They access the switch. So you have one thing that will stop when the switch is flicked, and another thing that flicks the switch. And now I need a way of saying, well, I want to run both of these. And this has to be concurrent. Because if I run runner before running stopper, obviously stopper will never have a chance to, to stop runner. And if I run stopper before runner, then by the time runner starts, the flick, you know, the, in, like the, the switch has already been flicked. So I need a way of doing this concurrently. And I can do this with join. But actually, um, it's a very common case where you want to sort of keep one stream and do another on, like, on the background. So we have a... Uh, a short, like a shortcut for join, basically in this case, which is called concurrently. 
So I'm just saying, just return runner and concurrently start this stopper in the background. And again, start is like when run, you know, it's not actually starting anything at the moment. Uh, at the moment. Um, and, and that's it. So we can uh, refactor this a little bit. So this is just a blind refactor, just inlining some stuff. I have a close uh, that will sleep for a amount of time and then uh, flick this switch using a signal. And then I return, I create a signal and I return the input by interrupting it uh, when the signal is set to true. And concurrently, I start this concurrent, this concurrent uh, stream that will, that will stop the stream uh, after a certain duration. Uh, and since I've like sort of carried it here, uh, I can use uh, some little syntactic nicely in FS2 uh, to use it. So for example, I had that initial infinite stream, repeat eval, that just was printing hello all the time. And I wanna print hello for two seconds, and then I wanna stop. And the way I do it, I'm just saying, well, stream repeat eval, IO print line hello, and then true, stop after two seconds. So very simply, this is gonna print hello and then stop after the seconds. And again, this is really, really compositional. Even when, so IO is still pure, right? But even if you were using IO, to do this, you would have a recursive function in IO that will have had to keep track of, you know, elapsed time before starting and then, you know, keep recurring and then check, okay, now it's two, two seconds have passed and then stop. Whereas here, because I have an infinite stream, I can separate the what I wanna to do to like when I want to do it. I want to do it all the time, and this is my, my single, my single uh, concern, and then I want to stop things uh, after two seconds, which is a separate concern. And we need stream concurrency to be able to express all this. And I would argue that this is still like super clear, uh, you know, and, 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 and this is what we want to write, that's how we want to write code uh, in, in pure FB. And so yeah, go wild. So these were like just two, two simple examples, um, uh, but I can build all sorts of stuff with FS2, you know, concurrent rate limiters or whatever. And you know, we haven't used streaming. You also get streaming on top of it. Uh, but, uh, but actually, no, it's great for control flow, for general control flow. And the thing is like, you might not need streaming in everyday coding, depending on what you do, but you definitely do need control flow every day. So, you know, hopefully this, this will help you. So FS2 streams, uh, they are very good for data that's too big to fit uh, into memory. And they're also very good for control flow that's too hard to fit in one set. And, and no matter how good you are, at some point, you'll find a, 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 like a, a certain complexity that will not fit uh, in your head. Uh, and, and with stream, you can compose things and decompose things, uh, and, it will still, and it will still be manageable. So, uh, as you know, Ross has, has, has mentioned, I'm not on Twitter, uh, sorry, but you can reach uh, Richard on Gitter, I'm System of Formiga, just DM me, I'm quite friendly. Uh, and then, special thanks to Michael Pilquist and Pavel Suplasek, which I have the pleasure of working with on FS2. And yeah, questions? That's it, yeah. Cool, whoa. Uh, let's do this one, yeah. Yeah, so if I wanted to basically use, so like let's say I was reading, uh, you're like uh, using the input stream to create a byte array. Yeah. Um, in the past I've used the standard library stream to continually read. Yeah. Is there a reason not to do that, to use FS2 in that situation? Well, the first thing is like, obviously for me, it's purity. Like, with, with the standard library stream, which is kind of weird, by the way, mm. for other reasons, like, every time you need an effect, it's gonna be a side effect. So you need to actually do side effects for Scala. And I didn't have time to go into that aspect, but in my opinion, that actually is a big obstacle to compositionality, in general, not just for FS2. So, the Scala standard library uh, stream does not give, not, that doesn't say anything about effects. You're on your own and you have to use side effects. Whereas with FS2, we got like this superpower of, of evaluating effects. So yes, I would, I would do it for, for, for that reason primarily. There might be also other reasons, but that's like, for me, that's the, the, the showstopper uh, for that use case. Yes? So those of us that are coming from teams that are heavily entrenched in ACA streams. Yes. Um, what would you advise, what would you say to those teams to convince them uh, of like the pros and cons of FS2 compared to Arcus? Yeah, I get, this, I get this question a lot, and, and actually the same answer. Uh, there's a lot of differences in, internally, so Arcus Stream is a push-based stream mechanism, FS2 is a pool maze mechanism, and there's pros and cons. But these are all pale when you think about side effects versus non-side effects. So normally I show them stuff where sharing streams side effectfully ends up being shared states the other way, 
which is still confusing to think about. Whereas sharing state, purely functionally, is more decomposable because you have to pass things as arguments if you want the, the, sta the state to be shared. Uh, so this is a very important point and a very small time. I have a whole other talk just on that, but that's what I use. I use like uh, scenarios where you need to share states between streams and how do they purely uh, ends up being, being nicer. Uh, yes? I'm assuming FS2 can also uh, compose arbitrarily complex data graphs at streams? Yes, so that's another question we get a lot. So yes, the answer is yes, but we do it a bit differently. So in Arca streams, you've got this concept of a graph, and so you build the whole graph, and then you run stuff through it. In FS2, we don't do that. We deal with stream directly. Uh, so you don't build a graph, and then, you know, as you've seen, you're just, you're just writing functions on stream. And since stream is a monad, and monad can embed, like, and express arbitrary sequential control flow, yes, you can do every shape, every shape you want. It might be a bit different. Like, you think, in, in Arca streams, you think about splitting and merging, here yeah, it might be a bit, bit different, but yes, you can do whatever you want, uh, basically. Yeah. Yes? Uh, you, you talked about zip, and I was curious if there's other ways to combine two streams, and is that the whole pole thing, or what? Yes, uh, so I think I, I have mentioned, so if you see stream, we say that it has an effect and a, a value that it emits, uh, but there's also another type called pool, which describes the action of actually pulling things from, from, from a stream. And there's actually a very, a very good reason for both types. Uh, and it's like, you know, they have two different mono distances and one is better for one thing and one is better for the other thing. Uh, but yes, you can basically use zip or you can use uh, uh, this like pull where you're basically saying I've got two, two streams, pull from the first, pull from the second. Uh, this is for like deterministic sort of zipping or you can use the concurrency one to do non-deterministic interleaving. But basically, so we have uh, this, this stream API covers most of your needs, and in cases where you need some more complex uh, stateful pooling from, from a stream, yes, you can use, you can use pool. So, question there, yeah. Oh, I have a much lower level question. Um, in the example you had with join unbounded, yeah. uh, would that be equivalent if you just did a fold and merge each one of the streams, to, uh, just merge them together with merge, not turn this with merge, or is there some kind of join? So unbounded? merge uh, is, is basically, a Simplification of join for, for two for two streams. So I'm using join unbounded there, but the more general version of join is like join four or join five. Um, and what that does actually, you have a stream of streams, right? Yep. So you're emitting streams, and you're also running them concurrently. Uh, and so we can actually say emit and start several things concurrently, but only when when there's five running, stop emitting, and wait for at least one to finish, and then keep keep going. So actually join, uh, not, not the abounded join. Join gives you this like uh, sort of bounded concurrency where you can start things but stop when a maximum concurrency uh, is reached. So yeah, you can do it with merge. Uh, I'll do it with join. Another reason not to do it with merge is that merge is implemented kind of in terms of join. So you are allocating more things. So like join needs one queue and it can do like, I don't know, 80 streams say. And if you fall with merge, you're doing a mini join every two, which might not be, might not be great. So, so if you have two streams, then yeah, by all means use merge uh, on 0 0.10. Don't use merge on 0 0.9. Uh, and, uh, and if not, use join. Any other questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>